for within three months, you are clear. Leadership goes beyond routine compliance. I will never be satisfied with simply what my boss or what my director tells me to do or accomplish. Leadership really goes beyond because you search for the better. Not only the better, you continuously search for the best. That's why you're not satisfied with the present situation. That's why you're ready to change. That's why you're ready to open up your mind, adapt, and look at possibilities where you can accomplish better, more effectively, hopefully to achieve the best for your organization and for your people. So I repeat, we are never satisfied with simply fulfilling the job description assigned to us in our organizational chart. We are so accustomed to have the organizational descriptions, right? The listings of what you should do. The leader goes beyond that. The leader takes the initiative If the leader feels and sees that this is achieving more effectively the goal of the organization, let's go. Let's do it. With or without. I hope the permission. <laughs> Sometimes you, you have to go beyond that. You have to decide on the spot. Even without the express permission of your superior because the situation demands it. The leader goes beyond the box, gets outside the box of the rudiments of organizational chart, organizational functions, descriptions, etc. Okay, leadership really actually is a force from within. People, uh, ordinary people, secular discipline would call it passion. A leader has that passion. Because of that passion, they have that power, the energy to do things. To us Catholics and Christians, it's more than the passion and the energy. It's the spirit working in us. And believing that we are instruments of Jesus, we are instruments of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have the tremendous energy to do things. Because of that, that undescribable Passion, energy in us contaminates, supports, inspires, motivates, coordinates people and an organization. This is the big difference with an ordinary organization and leadership with a Catholic Christian leadership who believes in the Trinity, who believes in Jesus, the grace of Jesus, and who believes in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I can readily share that prayer really is our daily contact, union with this divine with the Trinity to give us that passion and energy to continue the mission.
And it's, it's a good practice that the uh, organizers have done that you start all your activities, your Eucharist, prayer, but when you go back to your own organization, even as an ordinary lay catechist, the most important thing is you personally have that energy through prayer and union with God, that continuous union with God. That will lead you to be a real, effective leader. Of course, this does not mean that you're not going to do your part. That's why I asked you a while ago, try to look at yourself. Look at the profile you have. Look at your own strengths. Maybe you can look back also at your weaknesses. But the point here is, despite these weaknesses, despite these strengths, be believing in God, in the Trinity, in Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, believe that you are chosen to be this instrument. And you will wonder how you can overcome <clears throat> lots of difficulties. Sometimes you cannot even explain. Why do I go And so on. Okay, so these are, I think, uh, the essential points which I gathered from different authors, which I think uh, we should take a look and try to compare with our notes. What, how we see leadership and what qualities we think we have not uh, paid attention. Okay? So personally, the first part has always been, uh, I would say, neglected or not paid attention to your know, interpersonal relationship. Uh, by the way, if you take a look at the uh, Vangeli take a look, a lot of things there are implied about leadership. Of course, you cannot abandon the previous documents like CCC, CFC, etc., etc. They are also equally important, but as I was reading some details of this uh, latest document, I thought, wow, these are all about leadership by Joe Mason. A lot of them. And I, I will share with you some of the highlights later on. So with that, maybe we can describe leadership as an interpersonal influence. It's not a power. It's question of influencing people. And with that influence, directing them, helping them, if this is an organization towards the vision of the organization, it's being ready to go beyond the routine compliance with directions or orders being given to us by the upper up. <laughs> It's that energy, that force, that passion. We can tell you something about passion because even in sports, they're using this. It's becoming a common term now in different areas. That passion that supports, inspires, motivates, coordinates an organization. Or you don't work alone, you work within a group. And you have to work as a group. Uh, how many here are coming from the framework of catechetical organizations? Okay. How many are leading or leaders in those catechetical organizations? Wow. Wow, the challenge is yours. 
<laughs> okay? So, don't just give orders. The challenge to you now more is, how can I influence personally this guy or this person? You will need some antagonism. You don't share same ideas. That's the challenge of leadership. How to influence the other. Of course, keeping in mind your vision as a group, the ideals of your group, and the goals of your group. Okay, having said that, uh, let's try to get some lessons from the keys. May tatlong bibi. Alam niyo may kantang yun? Alam na alam. Very good. Okay? So, ganun kasi ito yung mga bibi. No? But, you know, you can learn and you can learn a lot. From this is in terms of leadership. Okay? Gusto niyo sa'yo yun? Gusto niyo sa'yo yun? Mister, Mister.
similar to people who are part of a team. The geese reach their goal quicker <coughs> and easier because they travel on the trust of one another and lift each other up along the way. When a goose falls out of formation, it feels the drag and resistance of trying to go through it alone. As it quickly repositions itself into the bee, it once again has the advantage of the power of the flock. If we benefit from the lessons of the geese, we will stay in formation with those who are headed in the same way that we are going. And if for a time we fall out of the team, we'll return to the safety and power of the V. When the lead goose gets tired, he rotates back into the V and another goose takes over. It pays to share leadership and take turns <coughs> doing hard jobs. The geese honk from behind to encourage those up front to keep their speed. Words of support and inspiration help energize those on the front line, helping them to keep pace in spite of the day-to-day -day pressures and fatigue. It is important that our honking be encouraging, otherwise it's just, well, honking. Finally, when a goose gets sick or wounded and falls out, two geese fall out of the formation and follow the injured one down to help and protect him. They stay with him until he is either able to fly or passes on. Then they launch out with another formation to catch up with their group. And just as the geese do, we will stand by each other when things get rough. We will stay in formation with those headed where we want to go. The next time you see a formation of geese, remember their message. The geese depend on teamwork for their life's journey. And as people, one of the most rewarding and fulfilling experiences in life is to be a contributing member of a team. You will